In this particular video, we'll have a look on how do we set up our basic development environment for SharePoint framework. So we're going to install the needed uh, setup to our machine uh, and the developer tooling uh, to get ready on the development. So let's actually jump uh, right uh, into it. So what I have here uh, is a one uh, clean Windows 10 installation. So obviously the setup is exactly the same uh, if you're using a Windows. There are small adjustments and small changes if you're using a Linux or a Mac. But basic steps are exactly the same. Now, the guidance for setting up your development environment is available uh, from the devtoroffice.com slash SharePoint. So if you come to devtoroffice.com slash SharePoint uh, and we click get started uh, in here you can find actually a lot of information uh, and articles and guidance and tutorials around uh, the SharePoint framework development and also other topics like uh, web, uh, web hook development and so on so in here we do have an article which is set up your development environment and basically what we're going to do within this video is that we're walking through the steps of getting started and you can all also see how fast uh, we can set up this clean completely clean machine uh, uh, to get started on the SharePoint framework client-side web part uh, development. Now, the first thing what we need to do, uh, like we were saying within the guidance, is that we're installing Node.js. So Node.js is available uh, from nodejs.org slash en in my case, because we're going to use the, the English version. And we're going to use the long-term uh, support version. Uh, so in this particular time when we're recording the video, that's 694, and we're going to install that. So let's actually install, uh, save that one uh, to our machine. Uh, and that's not going to take too long. Uh, so well, obviously Windows 10 is going to run the security scan uh, for that uh, item. And then we're able to install that uh, after the scanning has been completed. Now, during this video, obviously during the wait times when we're downloading something or when we're installing something, uh, I'm going to pause the video. Uh, but in general, you can actually see from the timing on the top right, uh, sorry, uh, on, the, on, the, on the right corner in here, um, how long does it actually take uh, to get started uh, or install all of the needed setup uh, for your development environment. Now, in the node case, uh, I'm going to just run that. And that's starting the node uh, installer. And let's do next. We're going to accept the license agreement uh, moving forward. Let's use the default settings and default settings. And we're essentially good to go. Um, and let's actually install that as well. Now, the Node.js has been installed at this point. So technically, um, you do not, for, for starting to use Node.js and NPM, this is all what you need to actually do. Uh, in Windows 10, uh, or in Windows in general, we do have a PowerShell, which is completely valid uh, commandlet uh, window and commandlet tool to get you started with uh, all of this stuff. So let's actually test and verify that we are using the right status. So let me actually start. Uh, PowerShell, uh, commandlet, oh, sorry, PowerShell, uh, command window, and let me do a quick npm uh, version check. So I'm running npm uh, da, uh, dash uh, v, uh, and it's actually telling me that I'm running a version 3.10.10. .10. And obviously the version itself might be slightly different whenever you're installing uh, the, the setup, but right now we are uh, in January, uh, 19th of January, and we are in a release candidate status, and you need to actually use an NPM version 3.x to get everything uh, up and running. Now, the next thing what I need to install uh, is essentially Visual Studio. Well, technically I could actually do something else. Uh, uh, all install these steps are not requ exactly have to be exactly like this, uh, but uh, I want to install the Visual Studio code. Visual Studio code is essentially a, well, it's a su uh, super fast and a simple tool uh, for web stack development. So let me actually save that one uh, to my machine. That's going to be downloaded from the internet. Uh, and I can actually execute and run the installer for the Visual Studio code as well. So let's install that one to this machine and do next. Uh, yes, accept the agreement. Uh, default settings are absolutely fine. That's fine. Uh, let's add actually open with the code action to Windows Explorer. This is really nice. So when you have your solutions and everything else within the file explorer, you can just right click uh, the folder and say open in uh, open in Visual Studio Code. 
and let's add that one as well uh, and let's register this as the default editor personally i really like visual studio code it's super fast and super easy to use uh, but obviously it's up to you what kind of a uh, editor you want to use technically well, like mentioned, it, there's multiple different options available. Visual Studio Code is not explicitly required, but it's a free tool and a really, really great tool uh, for web stack development and for a lot, of, a lot of the other development as well. So let me click inst uh, Next and Install, and that doesn't actually take too long to get uh, installed as well. Now, at this point, uh, we have Node.js uh, and NPM installed as part of the Node.js. NPM is the, the package manager uh, for the uh, Node packages. So we're able to download installers and, and uh, yeah, any other stuff from the internet using that. NPM essentially, if you're more a kind of a classic Windows developer, it's almost like the NuGet gallery. So there's an NPM gallery from where you can then install uh, different tools and different uh, uh, templates and, and so on. So after the Visual Studio code has been installed, this doesn't take actually too long either. So it's running and finalizing the installation. Let's move back on our uh, PowerShell side. So I'm gonna not gonna launch the Visual Studio code at this point. Uh, we're good to go with that one. In my PowerShell, uh, I'm gonna move here. Let's actually adjust the font slightly so you can more easily see what I'm actually showing in here. Uh, oop, and there we go. Uh, so you can actually see from the video, uh, the comments, what I'm actually applying. Now, we need to install certain generic tooling uh, to get started. And we're gonna use the NPM installer or NPM to actually get, uh, get this stuff installed. Uh, in this case, I'm installing uh, Yo and Gulp uh, globally on this machine, uh, which is slightly debatable. And this is the guidance what we have within the uh, devtoroffs.com slash SharePoint. Um, when I'm installing this globally on this machine, I'm installing a specific version. Technically, what you could do also is install this locally on your particular solution, if you prefer that. Um, that would do, uh, mean that you have the same essentially uh, solution or installers installed multiple times. So it's it's kind of a debatable. Uh, typically from a team, team development perspective, you would agree uh, what are the versions, what you can actually use for Yeoman and Gulp and NPM and all of that. And then you standardize based on that. So you should be able to use this as a global installa installation, uh, which is the default uh, recommendation also in our documentation. Now, again, debatable, Things are never black and white. Uh, so there are multiple considerations on this one. Now, this installer uh, or the command will take a while. So what happens here is that the, we are connecting to the NPM uh, packages and internet and we're pulling down uh, the needed uh, setup and needed tooling, which is getting installed on my machine. Since this will take a while, uh, essentially a few minutes, uh, we kind of pause the video at this point, but once again, you can have a look on the timing in here on the right corner uh, to see uh, how long the overall setup of the development machine actually takes in practice. So let's wait for uh, everything to get executed and we'll come back on the, uh, on the video and we'll cut, well, we'll cut the section away and we'll continue the video whenever the stuff has been installed. Excellent. That was actually pretty fast. So I'm going to scroll slightly that window up um, and we are pretty close actually uh, good to go. Now we installed the NPM uh, Node.js, we installed the Visual Studio Code as our development tooling, uh, which is, well, you can prefer uh, alternative development tooling as well. Uh, and we have the NPM installed as part of the Node.js installation and now we installed uh, Yeoman and a Gulp. Gulp is essentially the task manager. Yeoman is the template uh, manager for the templates. And what we now need to install is actually the SharePoint framework specific tooling. So let's actually execute npm install uh, install uh, clo uh, globally uh, Microsoft uh, generator uh, SharePoint. And this will essentially pull down all of the SharePoint framework client side, currently client side uh, development specific tooling. In the future, it will obviously download all of the other components as well. Um, and 
essentially immediately after this has been executed uh, we are ready to go with this machine um, this will download uh, the tooling the templates uh, and the needed uh, dependencies uh, for the machine in this particular execution i also used the, the uh, g switch essentially meaning that i'm installing this latest version which is available in the npm uh, packages uh, globally within this machine um, if you need to version or use different versions of the of the uh, generator sharepoint um, you can do that with the local installation or you can use docker to isolate your, your environments or you can use multiple vms so there's multiple options on that one and we will provide guidance on how to do uh, proper versioning with this one like with the previous execution, um, with the Yeoman templates and Gulp, this will actually take a while, uh, not too long. Um, so we could have actually paused for a second, but as you can see, uh, as I was talking, uh, we installed the whole setup uh, and everything is actually installed on the machine. So technically, we are now ready to go. Uh, and the, the first uh, tutorial uh, actually start by creating uh, uh, the actual web part. Technically, how we actually make that happen is that we run the Yeoman template. We we'll say that please run uh, the Microsoft SharePoint uh, template system, and then we we'll start uh, installing uh, and, and running through the creation of a SharePoint client side web part. I'm not going to do this one uh, in this particular video. Uh, because there's a separate video where we actually get started uh, or start creating this client-side web port and we'll have a close look on the on the Visual Studio uh, code uh, or the solution structure using then the Visual Studio code which we have now installed on the machine as well. But that's it. Um, that's all what's needed uh, to be installed to your development box uh, as the development environment for SharePoint framework. Uh, development. You can absolutely do that uh, within uh, your existing development box. It could be a laptop, it could be a VM somewhere, I don't know, it depends on again on your development preferences. Um, you can have Visual Studio Code installed side by side with the Visual Studio, uh, side by side with any other things as well. So there's multiple, multiple options on that. Uh, in this case, like mentioned, uh, we installed all of this in a completely clean, just created VM in, a, in a Microsoft Azure, and we are essentially good to go with the development. But that's it with this video, um, and please follow up on the next videos which are in the tutorial series, where we actually start creating client-side web pods, and we start doing some development and deploying those web pods to the SharePoint uh, online as well. Thanks for watching.